Greetings everybody, Red Ninja here. Today's tutorial will be modeling a sand glass along with some sand inside. Um, everything is rendered in ambient occlusion uh, except for the glass itself. That's a glass material. The actual sand is not a particle but it's, actually, it's an actual mesh that uh, just, just has a diffuse um, material, white color, nothing really crazy. And the, inter the interesting thing is that the glass somehow, you know, um, gives off the impression of little, little tiny sand particles or whatever, like little sand grains inside. I guess I'm going to assume from the reflective nature of, uh, of the glass material. But for the do, let's get to the tutorial. I'm going to load up a new blend file and we're pretty much going to delete everything, clear our scene, make my screen bigger. Um, since so that uh, we're not doing this just, you know, out of our head and trying to use our imagination to try to think how the object is, we're going to actually bring in a reference image of an hourglass, of a sand glass. Um, oh, I forgot. Let me do... UV image editor, pin it, and now let me just drag that image directly into here. All right, so now we have our reference to work from. Uh, let me see what else am I missing? Uh, oh yeah, the uh, screencast keys. <laughs> I don't know how I forget from time to time. All right, so let's clean our space up. So now, before we start modeling everything else we want to get the this this little part I can't really I don't know what it's, what it's called but we're gonna draw that using some planes and let's try to visualize how the shape is from a plane so we're gonna kind of gonna just drag it down scale it a little bit um, let me see, scale it like here, add a loop cut with control R. Now from there on, we're not going to worry about the other side because we're going to use a, a symmetry modifier. So we're going to just bring this out. Oops. And we're just going to rotate it a bit. So now we want to get this curve in here. So we're just going to move this on the x-axis just to here and we're just going to drag this up and we're going to add some extra loop cuts to just get the curve to curve a little bit. I think it needs one more and we can always just modify it afterwards as well all right and it looks like this is going to come in a little bit all right so now we'll do we'll make sure everything is flat over here s x zero or you could just check over here your um i forget what this this section of the window is called excuse me for you know forgetting a little bit but in your transforms you if yours if your numbers say something different just hit zero and everything will be straight on the uh on the, on the center part of the grid all right so now we're just going to add a modifier mirror clipping so that we don't go through it and so now we're just going to make some minor adjustments so that it represents our our bottom piece. And we're going to move this up. GG for edge slide. Just edge slide it a bit more. There we go. Um, looks like we need to maybe just rotate this a little bit. And then at the bottom, since there's going to be a curve, I'm just going to curve that up. little adjustments you can pretty much shape it however you however you want 
but from here, so we got our shape. We're gonna add some extra loop cuts in here. That's gonna help retain our uh, our shape, keep it hard edge. I mean, you could you can do it, you know, any time or you know when you extrude it, but it's best to just you know do it while it's in its flat form so that it uh take a bunch of the grunt work out. So, all right, so that's looking fine. Um, we're just gonna adjust this right here. Mainly because it's gonna, it's gonna give off an impression that that's a hard part as well. And it's gonna mess up our flow of our shape that we're trying to get since it's curved. So we're just gonna keep on moving these vertices around and edge slide them into a proper position. Edge slide these over. And then, you know, just keep on finessing around. All right, so that looks good to me. So now we're going to extrude it on the Z axis by press Z to constrain it. All right, so we're going to add a, a modifier, a uh, subdivision surface. You can just press control one, two, three to change the levels. All right, now we're going to change shading to smooth. So it'll give off a better a better view for us. So now it looks okay, but we're missing some more hard surfaces. So what we're gonna do now, tap back into edit mode, control R to add that loop cut. We're gonna use bevel, control B. And we're just gonna bring it closer to the other edges. Right about, right about there. All right, and now you see a big difference from how we had things. So the last thing that we would want to do is just finalize the shapes. Click this so you can click through. Oops. So we just want to get our shape to look a bit more curved rather than you know, a little flat. I mean, we don't want to, our, our modifier, our subdivision surface modifier is only going to do but so much. It can only do but so much. Oops, keep selecting the wrong axes. All right, that looks better. Something is a little off. Probably just got to move some of this down and rotate. All right, let's scale this thing a little bit. All right, good. So now, now that we're done with that piece, we're gonna we're gonna create the center one, which is gonna follow the same shape. So what we're gonna do, we're going to go into our side view, Control Tab, go into Vertex, and we're gonna select all these vertices. If you hold Control and left click, you do a lasso. And so lasso that selection, shift D, press P to select, uh, separate, go into object mode, and now you have a new piece. Now just go into your top view. Now what we're gonna do, tap back into edit mode. We're gonna, let's see, all right. So we're going to apply our modifier, our, our mirror modifier. And we're just gonna scale this down strictly in the center. Like right about, I don't wanna go too crazy. All right, we're like nine minutes in. Okay, so about right here. And we're just going to extrude that up. Let's see, it's a bit high, so. We wanna, I'm gonna thin out this piece right here. I'm gonna do it right now. Same thing, lasso select, thin it out. Cause it's not too big of a piece. And also optimal display, check that so that it's not, your wireframe is not looking all crazy. Okay. 
So, so that, now that we got that part, um, I'm gonna make this a little bit taller. And next, I'm going to, oops, uh, Shift D to duplicate. Now we want to make sure that it's on, what's on here correctly. So we're going to use our snapping option, and we're going to use face. So press G. And a, and a nice tip is when you're trying to make something can uh, snap onto a surface and it's at, a, at a, it's a, and excuse me, and it's at an angle, you would just want to go above because if you try to snap it otherwise, it's going to snap from the center. But now that the bottom is facing the space, it'll snap with, with no problem. All right, and that's what I mean. All right. So the last thing that we're going to do is we have some issues going on with our, with our object that it's not completely flat on our Z axis. So we're going to hit um, S Z zero that flattens out everything. And we're going to do the exact same up here. Cause mind you, we're going to, be using the same piece for the top portion as well and we wouldn't want to have to later on go on and adjust that so we just do it right about now select those last vertices lasso one last time and flatten all right so that's looking pretty good and we're going to continue on in the next part and we're going to start on these little rod holders and we're going to get the top portion as well and you know we'll model that and all this awesomeness and we'll lastly finish off with the glass and with the sand and we'll just add a material for the final part of the video thank you for watching subscribe rate comment if you have any questions and look forward to the next video. Bye.